Hello and welcome back to the Traction YouTube channel. We have another piece of sim racing hardware for you today in the form of the Next Level Racing GT Lite Pro. Now, John and I are not gonna be doing a full review today. We're going to be having a look at a bit more of a first impressions unboxing, and then we'll have a review for you on our website coming up in the next week or so. Without further ado, let's, uh, let's have a look at what we've got in here. Let's start with the easiest thing, and that is the box. We haven't even opened this yet. The tape is still on the outside, and I can read on the side here, it says compatible with all major wheels, pedals, shifters, and handbrakes, pre-drilled for Thrustmaster, Logitech, Fnatic, and Moser products, so all of the main brands, really, and I'm sure that a lot of the other smaller brands kind of use the same holes. Quick and easy assembly for racing, so I'm looking forward to seeing how long it takes to put this together. Yeah, one of the, the claims in the front that stand out to me, supports up to 30 Newton meters. That is a lot for what is essentially an entry-level, portable, foldable yeah. rig, and for the price, if it does support successfully 30 Newton meters, that's basically your mid-range direct drive market. Yeah, and at 279 pounds or 299 dollars, I think it's, what is it, 399? 330 euros in, in yeah. I'm not sure about Australian price, but we'll make sure we have all the prices in the description on the website and everything. It looks like it's got some round tubes, it's got sort of a built-in seat, almost kind of like the Logitech Trophy G Pro edition that we reviewed recently. Um, it's got some straps, which I, will be interesting to see how, what they actually achieve. Um, it seems like that stops the pedal deck probably moving a, away. Um, yeah, let's open it up. I'm actually surprised at how small the pack, the box is. It feels like even the box itself, really easy to lift and move. It's not as heavy as, anywhere near as heavy as like an aluminium profile rig or anything like that. Yeah, I think that's the whole thing, actually. That yeah, is, that is everything in the box. This Guys. could be a very short build process. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> this is what I rely on when I'm building things because I'm not very good at building things, but there we go. It's just past three o'clock. So five past three starting yep. build, so we'll have a rough idea of how long it takes us to build it. They will add a video for this, and it will be great, um, based on our experience with the other videos. But at the moment, we've got plenty of instructions anyway, we so are before, not a problem. We are before the release date at the moment, so this is, we're filming this before it's been released, so I'm sure that'll come out. Got a nice bag of bits. Must say, as, as always, what we've seen with Next Level Racing products, all very well packaged. I mean, you couldn't really get this in a smaller box. It's well protected, it's got all the bags. Actually, I must say, there's actually quite a bit of wear on this one. We've literally just taken this straight out of the box. Yeah, these, these scuffs must have come from being in the box, obviously packaged so tightly, even though there was um, there was wrapping around everything. It's, it's not really bad, but obviously this is, I assume this is a brand, it's supposed to be a brand new product, so. Yeah. Seat. Done. <laughs> Built. It looks quite comfortable, We're ready actually. to go. <laughs> there we go. That's it, that's it. And then you push that into the middle one. Yeah. And you should be roughly, roughly about right. You have to twist this right until it stops and then lock it in place. Oh, okay. It's quite nice actually, it's got little caps on the ends to stop the, stop anything going in the ends and to stop the ends getting di dented. Oh, just push, just push. Oh, there we go. I'm glad my fingers weren't in that. This looks like the pedal arms and where the pedals would then mount to. I can see that you've got the next level racing sort of um, ratchet lock things so that you can move these arms up and, up and down. So that if I loosen these off, you can sense it would loosen things and then it slides. That's how you adjust your pedals, or your pedal positioning. And also, it's quite good they're actually they're, they're independent because you can move the, so if you've got pedals that require a narrower or closer or further apart, you can pretty much move it wherever you need them, which is, and that'd be pretty quick to adjust. My only concern is that every time I've had a rig with, or every time I've used a rig with something that relies on friction to attach the, pedal tray is it sometimes, I haven't tried it yet, but they, you can't get it tight enough that it doesn't slide and no matter how hard you try it will eventually slide up. So we'll see. It looks like to get the pedals from angle to flat you have to pop this part out here. There we go. And then you flip this part over. Quite a neat little thought there. The pedal plates are attached to the chair using some plastic clips. Now, if the plastic's strong enough, that's absolutely fine, but I'm always wary of, because you think about how much force you could put through this load cell set of pedals. You know, if you're pushing 50, 60, 70 kilos and you're just attached to plastic, will the plastic stretch? Will it eventually snap? I don't know. Will you feel it move? They say that the rig is suitable for 13 newton meters of direct drive feedback torque from the steering wheel, but what about the pedals? They haven't said anything about that. So I'm interested to see what that's going to be like when we actually try it out. Right, so I can't actually get these Phillips head sort of locking nuts very tight with our little cheap 
Allen. So it gets the job done, it gets, a, it, gets it tight ish, but I'm actually gonna get a proper screwdriver so this is a, a properly sturdy. With the wheelbase on, you need to move it out the way you jump in and clip it back on around you. It looks like a lever of some kind. Yeah, okay. That's quite clever. Okay, so this is the shifter socket. But I reckon we should do it on that side because otherwise it's gonna be in the way of us when we get in, isn't it? Well, that's close enough for now. It's a bit wobbly, but you're screwing into plastic, so you can't really go that tight. That diagram's quite good for that, because it's not yeah. easy to show. Yes. That'll stop the wheel deck moving away from you, in theory, when you're pushing. Cool. Well, something I haven't noticed, actually, before, is that the seat really is breathable. I mean, you can, it's got these panels in, which are completely see-through. It's just like mesh, um, with the pads here and then in between. So nice uh, airflow, in case you get a bit sweaty. Just noticed there's a few more scratches on the surface of the wheel deck, clearly from transport. We haven't, we haven't done anything with this other than take it out of the box and mount it on. So not a perfect finish out of the box, which is unlike Next Level Racing actually, because as I, I, one of the things I noticed about the FGT Elite 160 was that it was immaculate. Looks like we're nearly there, John. It's all angle adjustment. It's all angle adjustment now. Height, uh, height adjustment, we should be okay. So the building process is pretty much... We're, we're done and it's, been, it's taken us Almost exactly an hour to build from scratch, but we've spent a lot of that time filming, so I mean, well under an hour with so, one person. Someone quick could do this in 30 Half. minutes, 35 yeah. minutes. Uh, someone slow, an hour or just over, but not a huge amount of time. You could do this in under an hour on your own quite easily. It's not heavy, um, especially if you're in a car to room with a bit of space, but like you could definitely build this in your bedroom in, in under an hour from, from pretty much scratch to, to, to adjustment because I think the rest of the time will be just getting it suited to exactly how you want it. So let's get it on the ground and, um, and see what it's like to sit in. There's two ways you can get in the rig. You can either leave it as it is all hooked up and just climb in just for, e just for speed. Um, obviously that's not gonna be that easy for some people. So you can, of course, as I showed you on the table, undo the side clip and it does rotate out of the way nicely and you can just kind of walk in and walk out which is yeah I suppose that's part of the design and it yeah works really well actually. I mean this is this part is not going to make up much of the video let's be honest. As expected the uh, the holes line up perfectly with the Logitech G Pro. It's very high and very far away so let's try and, try and adjust it so that it suits. So we're going to loosen these side pieces. Oh my god no don't do that when you're sitting in it. Lesson learned. So if it's up here, it's a bit too far away, but if you lean it forward, we're in the closest setting here, so that the, the wheel's actually mounted as close as it possibly can be to us. Oh my God. We can actually move the wheel deck. So I'm gonna take the wheel base back off, just the wheel deck, put the wheel base back on, and hopefully we'll be pretty close. You're gonna have abs of steel after this shoot, John. I definitely won't. Everything you bolt on this rig, you're bolting into plastic. Yeah. Which is fine, but it just means everything's a little bit soft and obviously it got a lot more, uh, more flex than if you're bolting into metal, but of course that's where they save the price. Having moved the wheel plate, as we saw in the instructions, it is now a comfortable position for me, so I'm just bolting it on again. Right, um, what next? pedals. 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 It's gonna be close. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna, no, we need bigger washers than that. So we've hit our first major hurdle, and that is that the bolts were too small for the slots in the pedal plates, which means that we need to get some bigger washers. It's now, 10 past five, so John and I are gonna go home. I'll come back tomorrow with some different washers and we'll continue this then. We're back, it's a new day, got some washers, let's continue. Literally, we've loosened them off and then just pushing my feet and it slides nicely, getting to where I want, and then we just cinch them down. I think we're good. Yeah, we don't have a shifter for this, for this um, which, but it's worth noting, you thought the shifter point was quite far away, so maybe we'll put a shifter on just to see. Please stand by once again. There's really not much about No, you, you can't move these bolts, John, because these are threaded. So it is so, literally So just... basically you've got left and right adjustability. So yeah, it's a bit far away. It's, it's workable. If I was like racing and I went for a gear, it'd be very easy to miss a gear because my arm is completely straight. And I'm sure there's probably a workaround, but straight out of the box, it's not, exact, it's not ideal. Right, so we're driving. I've selected Silk Cut Jaguar at Spa just cause. And I'm just having my first, literally just finishing my first lap. And so far, this Logitech wheel's on about, I think about five or six Newton meters, I've said it, it says at the moment. I've got it here, so. Feels okay. I mean, it, there's clearly some flex in the wheel deck. Just if I push and pull the wheel, there's a lot going on there. Doesn't feel terrible I'm driving. 
I mean, if I, look, I mean, I'm barely, I mean, I'm not pushing that that hard. I mean, look, that's just my fingers. And that is that tight as it can go? Yeah, that's as tight as it can go. We've got the straps tight. Maybe we need to do them stronger because I've got a bit of flex. There's a bit of slack both in, in the middle. So maybe if we do this tighter and then tighten those against this, it might help a little bit. Um, but initial reaction is the actual solid metal parts themselves pretty flimsy, I must say. I mean, it doesn't feel like it's going to break, I'd say, but of course, we are mounting some metal tubes directly into plastic. So that is always going to be a concern because plastic's never going to be quite as strong as the metal. What about the pedals? The pedals, actually, on the floor, must say, feel pretty solid. Like, there's almost no movement there. I don't know if the camera can show that, but if I just go into a braking zone in a moment, brake pretty hard. There's not much going on there. So that's pretty good. And also, for these pedals, this is the perfect angle. I'm very comfortable in this. The seat, again, not actually too much flex. I mean, of course, the cushions are moving. It's almost like a, a fabric seat, so it's sort of a seat wrapped around some frames. There's no actual metal or solid material but under your bum or behind your back. But it is very comfortable. The one thing I do like about this is there's a lot of lumbar support. Um, there's a big cushion behind the lower back because a lot of seats like this where they're, where they're sort of fabric and um, they're not solid, you can often get a lot of flimsiness around the back and then it can make your back ache, whereas this is actually very comfortable. Not quite as comfortable as the Logitech uh, or Play Seat Trophy Logitech G Edition that we reviewed recently, but it's not far off at all. And it's, I can see it being breathable. Again, we saw the, uh, the, the mesh in the back of it. We've tightened the straps now on the sides and, and down to the pedals, which hopefully, in theory, should lock this uh, wheel deck in a bit more, but I'm still not that impressed with the amount of a wobble. I mean, literally with two fingers. Again, I'd like to reiterate, you don't really feel it a huge amount while you're driving, but yeah, let's turn the wheel up to 11 newton meters and see what it drives like. In terms of their claim that it's compatible to up to 30 newton meters, I do believe them because I don't feel like it's gonna get ripped out of its socket. I don't feel like the wheel's deck's gonna fall off. If you're just interested in bolting a wheel on and, and having a play like I am on Gran Turismo 7 now, it works absolutely fine. I can feel the force feedback. You're never got quite gonna get the same level of detail to your hands when the wheel deck is moving as much as it is because of course, the more solid the wheel deck, the more force to transfer to your hands and arms. But the pedals, I must say, I'm very impressed with the way that they've kind of attached that to the base. There's no flex there. It doesn't seem to be pushing further away. The clamps work fine. Perfectly good, easy to set up once you've got the right washers and um, yeah, it lets you, lets you play pretty comfortably as well. Now I've had a go. John, let's, uh, let's see if we can get this thing to fit you. Oh my goodness. It feels like it's stretching everything a little bit because the gear shifters are the way as well. So that's the thing as well, Piers. Oh yeah. So you see, I was trying to open that and I'm pushing against that. Uh, okay. So you so don't have as much wiggle room, so I was having to kind of scrape my legs over a bit. Straight away, I could drive like this yeah. absolutely comfortably. I think you'd set it up to be comfortable for you, but on the longer side, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So for me, that steering wheel position, Absolutely fine. I think perfect would be just a tiny bit further away. Worth mentioning actually that I've noticed there's some adjustment down here with these um, so we can move the, the length of this tube to so the front of the seat up and down which would then allow you to either lean the seat back more or forward more but that would then also move the gear shifter and the steering wheel so basically this, this whole back section tilts back or forward. We can't go any further forward, we can go a lot further back. I think what I would say about this so far is I can already tell that with you know an entry level wheel whether that's a five newton meter direct drive or a belt driven or gear driven wheel this is going to be more than enough to to be at least an upgrade from a desk even if it's just to be able to have your pedals in a secure position and a comfy seat this is going to be more than enough for those of you who are looking to buy that sort of thing an introduction it's when you go up to the the mid-range direct drive you know the 10 12 newton meters that's when I guess the compromises become more apparent. You can really feel the difference. And as Piers was saying, yes, there is that bit of flex, which is inevitable in a product like this. Of course, you're compromising on price and the way it's built to be light and portable and cheap. I think for most of you, this is gonna be plenty enough. It's when you get really, really serious, that's when you're gonna to have to think about where those compromises are. So just like Piers was saying, I'm feeling no movement whatsoever in the pedals. I could see it when I was watching him drive, there was just nothing. Uh, so you can really push that pedal hard, and this is a load cell as well. So it's not as if it's a weak pedal, but yeah, zero problems there, very, very happy. 
I am also comfortable in the seat. I feel like I could do a long stint in the seat. Obviously we've just started, but I'm not feeling any initial issues there. I'm used to racing on a desk with a lower powered wheel and uh, I genuinely believe this is gonna be a step up. I think for me as well, the other important thing with this is the adjustability is there. There's lots of things you can adjust. It's just not that everything's straightforward and simple to do so. You know, this is the kind of rig where your best bet is to set it up in a way that you're happy with and if you're sharing it with someone, see if you can find a compromise between the two of you and then you're not gonna have to worry about anything. But if you do need to adjust it, you can. It just takes a little bit of thinking, a little bit of time and there's lots of different areas you have to consider to make the correct adjustment without ruining and compromising in some other area. So I'd say there's pros and cons with that as well. If it's just you and your own, get it right the first time, spend a bit of time on it and, and you're sorted basically. So we've driven on this for about an hour or so between us now, John, and of course this is only a first thoughts and initial impressions video. And so far, I think we both agree, it's definitely a step up from using a desk with some pedals on the floor because the pedal tray especially, or where the pedals mount to, is completely solid. And for just wheeling out for some fun, either on PlayStation or just, just a step up from a desk or a wheel stand, it's perfect. However, we've touched on some of the negative points, especially, I mean, you can see a shot now. It's not rock solid, but that's not really what it's designed for. I think the same. I think for people that are actually looking to buy something like this, it's going to be pretty ideal. It's going to be, as you say, that easy to set up sim rig that you can just jump in, play something, say you're pulling it out in your living room, having a friend, having a race with some friends, absolutely perfect. I think it's just if you're really taking it seriously and you want those last few tenths in an esports setting, then the compromises become apparent and actually make a difference. So, but this isn't for that market. This isn't for the super, super serious. Um, you're going to have to spend a bit more money if you want to do something like that, but you don't need it. And yeah, I mean, I would, I would be happy with this at home, to be honest. This is the kind of thing I would look for in my living room to be able to play Gran Turismo because exactly. yeah, that's all I need. Fits the bill, it does kind of everything it says on the box but nothing more and I think you know pretty happy with it. Overall positive for what it is and I think that is the important thing. I'm sure a lot of you in the comments will be thinking that wheel deck flexes so much why would you buy it but it's not for someone that wants something that is rock solid. It never claims to be rock solid, it only says compatible with and it is and it's comfy, it works and it folds away so yeah. Good first impressions, full review on traction.gg. But thanks for watching for today. As always, have a great day and keep it pinned.